These two previous hackathon open source projects are the foundation for our COVID-19 hackathon project called Connecting to Ventilators in Entirely New Ways. You're looking at a design here of a do-it-yourself ventilator. There's a huge ventilator shortage in the world right now, and ventilators and, of course, trained medical staff are critical parts of the solution to fight against COVID-19 until we can develop a vaccine. Do-it-yourself ventilators will only be adapted if we can monitor them closely and intervene if there's an issue. We need to be able to carefully monitor their effectiveness and learn about patient and machine effectivity through AI and hard-coded algorithms. These do-it-yourself ventilators must fit into the daily processes and meet the compliance requirements in real hospitals. Using an Arduino with multiple attached sensors and a simple step of motor, you can monitor and drive a do-it-yourself ventilator. Let me show you how it works. We have a real do-it-yourself ventilator on the back end, but we're going to use a simulator here for this demonstration. And once I send an event in, it's going to check inventory to see if that asset already exists. And if it doesn't have that asset, that serial number asset, it's going to create a new asset in the Salesforce inventory. And you'll notice we've got three different types of machines. We have a do-it-yourself, a refurbished, and a professional machine. Now that machine is in the ventilator allocation inventory. So if I'm a doctor here and I have a patient that is in high risk status, I'm gonna change their status from low to high. And it's gonna put them into the patient triage list. As soon as they're in the uh, patient triage list and a healthy packet comes in from an operational do-it-yourself machine, it's going to automatically assign that working machine, that healthy machine, to a sick patient. And you'll notice that the asset record goes from in inventory to in use, and it's assigned to patient 11. And all the other pertinent sensor data is being added to that asset record. So now if we drop the SPO2 levels and change some of the other levels in the simulator, we can see that all the information is updated in the Salesforce asset record. So next what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a problem in the patient. We're going to drop the SPO2 level down below the threshold. And in the Salesforce Lightning Flow, there's a rule that says if the SPO2 level is below the threshold, then we're going to create a case in Service Cloud. And you see there, sure enough, a case is created in Service Cloud. So since our patient has received excellent care from our do-it-yourself ventilator, they are now recovering. And we're going to crank the... SPO2 levels up to 100, and after five test cycles with the patient over a period of time, if their SPO2 levels are healthy, then it's going to return the machine back into inventory and notify the doctor that their patient is on the road to recovery. There's also a Salesforce Lightning component that monitors all of the sensors attached to the equipment and to the patient. And you can see here that the SPO2 levels are falling and rising. Here are the email notifications that go out to the doctor. When the patient is assigned a ventilator, the doctor gets notified. And also when the patient recovers, they're notified and they can authorize the removal of the patient from the ventilator. So here's the Salesforce Health Cloud Lightning Flow. When the event comes in, it checks to see if there's an existing asset and it creates a new asset if there isn't one. And then it checks the patient triage list to see if there's a patient waiting for a machine and it assigns the machine to the patient. This is also doing health checks on the machine and health checks on the patient. And when the patient recovers, it put, returns the machine into inventory for the next triage patient to be able to leverage it. Thanks for watching.